Hey guys, I released a song called Veloma off of my upcoming album Gleam Dream, and this is just a little video explaining how that song was made. So I'm gonna go ahead and start at the beginning of the song. So what is this sample? This is actually a sample of a song I made years and years ago with a completely different artist um, that goes by Academy Garden. This is actually not the first time I've sampled this song. I also used it in a song called Button Willow. So if I take this sample and I reverse it, and something you're seeing me experiment with a little bit more in this track is sparse production. Like the entire instrumental really for that, the, the, the verses is based off of just the sample low passed. It's kind of got that muffled underwater sound while you have the kick on top of it. That little twinkly bit is just a synth inside of FL Studio called Toxic Biohazard. And I just picked out the MIDI notes. The chorus section of the song is actually that same song, just chopped a little bit more. I'll, I'll allow you to hear where the, the sample changes a little bit for the chorus. That whole sample, as you can hear, doesn't really have a lot of direction when it comes to like chords or even harmony. It kind of just sounds like a bunch of noise. And then you can hear the vocals, or my vocals, in the, the, the song that's being sampled. Since it's pitched up so much, they kind of sound like little chipmunk vocals. So the bass line is actually what carries most of the harmonic movement in, in the chorus, because the chorus is really just this sample and a bass line. We have another little twinkly bit right here with the toxic biohazard synth. It's really just lining up a bunch of mini notes, really. And that's actually what takes us into the second chorus. So that brings us to the bridge section of the song. The first part of the bridge I wanna talk about is just this boy choir that I added. Super simple, not even really full chords, just two notes at a time. Um, and then I added on top of that a bass line um, to give it a little bit more movement. And then on top of those two things, I added a more energetic drum arrangement that was more drum and bass than, than the rest of the song. And then the sample that was in the very beginning of the song, I added that back, except I chopped it a lot. And the final bit of instrumentation that I added was my MX-61. I put in a lead, which, which sounds kind of like an electric guitar, this little lead sound. Then I replace that lead guitar sound with a piano. And 
And then I drop the energy completely by adding piano chords and dropping the drum and bass pattern to be halftime. I do also like to add an orchestral bit to my songs, but I saved that bit to the very end of Veloma. So I'm just gonna go over the layers that I added for the very ending of the song. First, we started with um, some violins. So I'll play those for you really quick. Then we added a little trumpet section here, but just these three notes, just these three notes. The next layer that we see added is an oboe, actually, um, that comes in to harmonize with that violin that I arranged earlier. Then we have an English horn that comes um, above the oboe. And then we just have these five notes that come in on the contrabass, just at the very end of the phrase. And then we bring that boy choir back. Remember the boy choir from like the, the drum and bass section? Um, that actually comes back in at the very end here. And then I actually add some synthesizers. I have two main synthesizers that I add. The first one is this super saw right here. And then the second synth I add are those same notes, just an octave down. And then of course I added some 808s. Now, when it comes to vocals, I did do the verses of this song. I think I found a way out. But in order to talk about the vocals and the hook of this song, I actually need to bring on the artist who made those. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm here with uh, Fantasy Love, who did the the vocals um, for Veloma. And um, okay, so uh, I guess introduce yourself a little bit for, for anybody watching this that doesn't know who you are. I'm Fantasy Love. Uh, uh, I'm a pop performer and producer uh, based out here in LA. Yeah, I'm, honestly, I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to workshop like the the perfect like a uh, like two second intro. Like, did that did that flow well? How did that? How no, did that, that, go? that, that sounded work? fine. I feel okay, like I'm the worst right, at right. this. I like stammer my way through it. So like anybody that has any confidence in like who or what they are is impressive <laughs> to me. <laughs> Just like I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That that makes that that makes sense. I I was saying it, and I was like, yeah, yeah, that is what I am, aren't I? Huh. <laughs> yeah, and you've and you've been making music for for quite some time now. Everybody has a different beginning in music, like a different like genesis and like why um, they yeah. got into it and also like why they sound the way they do, like what their processes are and, and, and that. So like, why did you get into music? The real answer, the moment that I'm realizing was the shift, right? Was I actually wanted to be a filmmaker and a writer. Uh, I started out like thinking like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna make movies and I'm gonna like- Oh wow. Be an actor and like do, <laughs> do all this like, crazy stuff right um and so i had this camera that i was using to like make these short videos with my sibling miles who also like makes videos now Whoa. um miles j who is like phenomenal if y'all are watching this and like don't know miles j like <laughs> get on it come on like it's 2022 uh but Wait, what kind of making... camera were you guys using just uh we each had our own little like video camcorder things and Whoa. we would make these little like two camera like videos uh what's the name of that movie uh be kind rewind you ever watched that yeah actually with, yeah 
Yeah, so before that movie came out, that was like our lived experience. <laughs> was like wow. <laughs> making making these like these like bootleg versions of movies as kids and I was like this is this is what I want to do. This is like everything I want to do. And then one day my camera broke or it got lost or something happened just like overnight where I didn't have a camera anymore. And I was like, I have all this creative energy still, I guess I'll just like learn how to make music. I just like wow. picked up the next thing. Just like there was a bass guitar lying around because my dad <laughs> plays bass and was like, all right, I guess this is what I'll do now. Uh, That's so I just, funny. Like, switched. What if your camera didn't break? Will we even be if, talking right now? <laughs> <laughs> if that camera did not break, like I'd be like already, I'd have already like been directing the next like Marvel movie. I'd be... <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Uh, That's yeah. wild. <laughs> and I get it, like being a kid and like something like a path closing down, and instead of trying to like find a way to make that path work, just being like, all right, well I'll you're go just, over here. And yeah, do... you're just like a kid. It's, it's all the same soup. You're just trying to do anything to like fill the time, anything that like catches your attention. So it was like, yeah, camera broke. Uh, what else? What what else is there? It was just like so bass true. guitar and just like kept going. Yeah. So yeah, I just kind of like took that and just ran with it. That's really cool for any for anybody watching also that doesn't know. Like, um, me and Fantasy Love live in the same state, but my <laughs> earliest memory of you is at an IHOP, like the IHOP in downtown <laughs> yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah. And I, to me, that's the first time we met. If we met before then, I do not no. remember it. I that was the first time that we met officially because I think maybe I said hi or something to you like earlier that day but it was a wild day yeah, <laughs> it, was a, yeah. it was a wild day yeah so like that IHOP was like the first time that we like spoke word and I remember very little from that night but the very the very specific thing I remember is like being out front of IHOP <laughs> and you were like leaving. You know what I was gonna say? You were like yeah. leaving, and all of us—it's like just a bunch of like ratty like uh, artists, <laughs> nobodies like outside. And it's just like, oh, where are you going? And it's like, oh, I have to go back to like Koreatown, or like, yeah, I'm going <laughs> yeah. back to Compton. I'm going back. Like, I live in Glendale, and I was like, oh, yeah. where are you going? The place you said <laughs> sounded like a joke because it's a yeah. place no one goes. Like, and it's in California. It it's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a uh, Lompoc. California, Lompoc, California. Yeah, and you said it and I laughed. It wasn't even like an insulting laugh. I was just like, that's insane because of like the bubbles that we all live in. It's so right. easy to think of a place like Lompoc and be like, no one there cares about my music. No one there even has heard of anything we're doing. That's a, like a, a like oh. a micro community. Yeah. And so being, cause like you didn't move really into like the center of LA until like pretty recently pretty in your recently, like artistic yeah. career. So yeah. how is all of this art even reaching you? Like, how are you getting the inspiration for these things in these really remote small okay, places? So, you know, like you said, like places like that, like no one, no one even like cares about my music out there, right? I feel like <laughs> in places like that, if someone is hearing it, they like care the most about it. Like your That's music is like carrying them through <laughs> like that experience, right? So like right. I when I was there listening to like a lot of these like artists online, I had zero idea who the artists were. I was just hearing these songs and this music and being like, this is the most inventive, creative, cool stuff that I've like ever heard at this point in my life you know wow. so i was yeah. losing my mind so being able to like go out to la and like you know see these artists perform and like hear this in a live setting was like oh my god like <laughs> a show like this like would never happen in Lompoc. like i have to do everything in my power to like make it out to this to come out to that and so sure. meeting all of these artists felt like whoa they're all just like people like me just yeah different walks of life like here here i am like thinking this 
is like I'm showing up to some crazy like huge like rager like <laughs> dead mouse type like show and it's just like a bunch of people who are really passionate really talented doing what they like to do like, super accessible it's yeah, like oh it's super just anybody. accessible yeah yeah it's just yeah it's just like anybody just yeah like make something <laughs> yeah you you mentioned briefly bass guitar and like bass guitar was also my instrument like that i started oh, it what and so, yeah i always like jokingly refer to bass as like a gateway instrument you you start there and then like yeah. where you end up can be like so wildly different <laughs> exactly and like so i was playing bass in all these bands but you're talking about picking up like your dad's bass what were you doing with just because like a bass is a wild solo instrument to have. <laughs> like, like what were you doing with yeah, it i was not not into like recording music for like several years. I would just pick it up and try and learn how to play along to like literally anything that was around cool. theme songs and like commercial music. And so after a while of doing that, my dad was like, you know, like you should learn how to like do this like for real, like let's get you in some classes. And then I didn't take the classes. Uh, of course not. Why? Yeah, why would you? Just like, why? Yeah. Why would I do that when, like, <laughs> clearly, like, I learned how to play this jingle from this commercial by myself, like, yeah. fine. But yeah, after a while of just like doing that, I was like, can I record this somehow? Like, can I make like a song? All of this weird patchwork of me playing around with making music and not really like diving in. Like there's a there's a PS2 game that was, I think it was just called Music Maker. I know what game you're talking about. Okay, <laughs> I know what yeah. game you're talking about. That was another gateway yeah. for like producers everywhere where it's just like, oh wow, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like I play this game, it was like me and my cousins would sit there and we would like make beats and we would like rap wow. over the beats. <laughs> oh, that's sick. <laughs> Honestly, it was really, it was really sick. We got super creative. Um, somewhere, still on an on a memory yeah. card, I have the like save files from those projects. I don't have the game anymore, but if I got the game wow. again, I would still have. That's pretty the songs. cool, actually. Yeah, and one of these days, <laughs> one of these days. I'm releasing I'm the unreleased. All of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny because like a lot of people underestimate that, like as a kid, especially, but for anyone, like when you're getting into creative stuff, there is this weird magic of like hearing something out in the world and just going like, oh, that was made with magic or that was made by means I don't understand. Yeah. And then suddenly yeah. being able to do it yourself, it is like super empowering where it's like, oh, I know that that's just like the baseline for a, a White Stripe song, but I did it. Like I'm yeah. doing it right now. Yeah. You mentioned mentioning starting with like bass guitar. I always felt like, like knowing you, like you are kind of like, an alternate universe version of myself of the me <laughs> that started making music like what i envisioned <laughs> this is like very something. funny i have a script i have like talking points and that's one of my talking points where i'm like i feel like we're two sides of the same exact coin yeah. that like somewhere along the way there's two I, there's, yeah <laughs> we had like a path there's like a path where it's like okay we're starting the same and then something i i never got that camera my camera broke and you know like yeah like everything everything kind of like branched out in a different way because you you showed me pictures of you when you were young like posing <laughs> with like your keyboard right yeah <laughs> like super and dramatic like just <laughs> i swear to god I have those same exact pictures of me like <laughs> posing super cool with a keyboard. Yeah, and I you was were like, like, <laughs> like in your See, head, you're like a star. You're just like, I know exactly what this is. You have such a clear vision as like a kid of like, here's what it is. Here's where I'm going to be. Yeah. It's Warp Tour, baby. I'm over here. And then like, <laughs> like a gust of wind will blow you in another direction and instead of being discouraged you have like all that same energy for just this new thing just a like, completely <laughs> different thing see where you're at now and every now and then i'm like you know like little 12 13 year old me would be so happy to see you thrive like, <laughs> <laughs> that's you that's huge that means a lot yeah. Because to go back to the like the IHOP moment, when I saw you at IHOP, and I'm glad that I have like these memories of these moments because I didn't know you had any interest in music. I was just like, this is somebody who was at the show and like came to hang out afterwards. Yeah. 
you you kept showing up at things and then you actually moved into town and like we hung out a few times and then we had like friends in common and I was seeing you more and more often and it was like I was I felt like there was a movie happening like your life was a movie <laughs> but I was like doing laundry so I kept like peeking in every now and then and I was like oh okay some wild developments have Some, happened something's going on <laughs> and so it is really interesting seeing you kind of evolve and develop musically honestly that's kind of how i feel too i yes. still feel exactly the same <laughs> as i felt like when i started like the feeling has not changed at all but like the circumstance and like materially things have changed so it's like yeah. oh yeah interesting like i guess that's happening now but still on the inside i'm like how did how did i get here What's yeah, oh, oh my God. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like saying it to yourself. You're just like, this is weird, man. I'm liking it. What a fun ride. But like, I don't know. Man. I, yeah, it's like, uh... <laughs> I feel that. I haven't wanted to like put myself out there to like jump oh. into the fray and like. Is there a reason? You know, is there like a specific reason why? Mainly, I just don't feel like competent enough or like, oh yeah, oh. like I can't, I can't put anything out yet until like I'm this good. The past couple years for me has just been me trying to like get into the mindset of just feeling like, hey, this is what I'm doing right now. Whatever happens, happens. Like, <laughs> not... It can't fail. It's just like, yeah, this is what I'm doing right now. I'll be doing something else <laughs> later. You just gotta, you gotta go. And I think honestly, like that was the hardest part to like grasp onto. I put some music out back in like 2015, I think, something like wow. that. Deep, deep cuts, real, real ones. Yeah, wow, it's yeah, all gone. I, that. I eviscerated <laughs> that stuff. It's, it's no longer. Online. It's destroyed. <laughs> it's, wow, it's gone. But uh, in 2020, I was just like, if there ever was a time for me to just put some music out, like I think now is the time. Like I'm sitting here alone in my room just make a song put it out the main intent for me right now is to just like make something put it out a lot of people are like very intentional and i think i i want to be really intentional about like what i'm doing you know but like i just like can't i can't if yeah, i put yeah, that yeah, much yeah. like focus onto something it's just not gonna happen like i have to be kind of stupid about how i do things because otherwise it won't get done and there is a very specific type of artist that's super intentional and it's like oh my god their 10th album like wraps back into their first album <laughs> yeah and they've been yeah. using the same text font for the past 20 years everything <laughs> makes sense everything's so intentional like a wes anderson type where it's like he's got a very yeah. consistent voice he, and style this is his thing yeah. yeah and it's like that's great that's great for them but yeah. that's just not the only way quality that's art happens. That's not the only way. God, yeah. <laughs> God. And it's the break, <laughs> the breakthrough of realizing that was yeah. just like such a oh God, it just like opened my mind so much. Like going to a show and seeing like literally anyone play now feels great to me. Just like going out and being like, damn, you made that. <laughs> to tie into film, right? Uh I haven't been able to stop talking about this. If we've had a conversation in like the past like four or five months, this has been a part of it. Everything, everywhere, oh. all at once. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Like, yeah. If you're watching this and you haven't seen that movie, <laughs> <laughs> the Daniels I, haven't like, paid for this. They haven't paid for this plug. This <laughs> is just, it's just the best movie that's happened in a really long it's, time. It's, it's just truly, honestly, this movie is my line in the sand. Like, if you're a fantasy love fan and, like, you don't like this movie, then, like... <laughs> unfollow me. Unfollow, unfollow me. Stop me. streaming. <laughs> <laughs> there, There's a line from that movie that, like, happens very early on that, like, ugh, just stabbed me in the chest. Uh, where one of the characters is saying every failure, every mistake, every wrong turn has led you right here to this moment don't waste it or something along the lines of that right yeah and i feel like there's nothing more that needs to be said that line is like yeah like don't worry so much about like what it's going to be or what it needs to be and just like 
let it be what it is right now. I I need to hear that really bad. I need to remind myself, like, don't get caught up in, like, the whole yeah. storyline and, like, tying some grand arc together. Just, like, be, be in the process of making it and, like, don't don't get swept up in a tide. Absolutely. It, it's it's hard. It can be heartbreaking because as, as much fun as like narratives are and like storytelling and things like that, it's just like no one's life really can be. I mean, we can make documentaries to like cut out bits to kind of create like a three act play out of someone's life. But nobody's yeah. life actually works that way. And and I right. think we fooled ourselves into thinking that our careers, our lives, our childhoods need like a climax yeah. and like reasons yeah, yeah, for things. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, nothing happens really that way. Like, I think that that's important. And I think that that ties well into like the next point that I wanted to make, because as somebody who has like been around you in and out a lot, there are certain artists that are like, musically, you really want to work with them or mm. other people want you to work together where they're just like, oh, these two sounds would make so much sense together. But as an artist, there's also this thing where you want to work with somebody just because like you like them as a person and you feel like <laughs> yeah. you get along. You're just like, I just want to yeah. create something with this person because I feel like our vibes are sick. Yeah. But I don't yeah. know if that means anything artistically. And so I wanted to make music with you before I even heard music. And so <laughs> yeah. when people were like, oh, the music's good. I'm like, OK, that's cool. That's cool. I would love to work with this person. <laughs> yeah. But then fast forward a little bit and I heard the song. Um, be with you right now or bw yeah. like wire and yeah. i heard that song <laughs> and i didn't know it was you actually and then i like looked at the artist name and i was like oh crap like i know who this <laughs> is this is what the music sounds like and i was like listening to it and i was like this is so good for so many reasons in fact i like did i have like a twitch stream where i do it's called morning medley where i like play yeah. piano and we do like these deep dives on tracks and i liked the song so much i like featured it as like one of the songs that we did this like deep dive talk on like so why is this song good like there's a polyrhythm being used here like here we're like the the reverbs being oh, used here in the way that so amazing <laughs> and the thing that really touched me in that song artistically which is which led to me wanting to feature you in this specific song was the way that you process vocals and the way you create mm. vocals makes no sense to me in a good yeah. way which That's i was really... like this is really cool that's really really good to hear that i'm i'm really i'm really flattered to hear that my voice is really special to me in like a weird way i've always like enjoyed like doing funny voices yes. and there's followers so running shoes in case you have a little game later. goofing off and like okay. like playing with different like textures that i can do with like my natural voice and so in like production i have just been like playing with ways to like affect like just experimenting with different things i can do in a daw with my voice different ways that i can like play with that sound because one part of it i think is like like gender expression right like right. i think there's there's uh this singer nick patera uh yeah who who is on youtube and is like famous for singing duets like disney duets um like whole new world but singing both like aladdin and oh, jasmine's word. part okay. you know yes. and seeing that as a youth i was like i must have that <laughs> <laughs> I simply must have that. We just like practice like switching between these wow. like affects in my voice and working working on like learning production and discovering form and shifting was like it's huge, okay. right? <laughs> we talked yeah. about that in the deep dive on that song, by the way, just like form and shifting. Wow. Now we're now we're talking. Like now we're <laughs> now we're now we're fucking cooking. With this track specifically, um, Be With You Right Now, that was a track that I really wanted to have this like soft, like feminine affect it's in so this track. Um, and honestly, doing this interview, I was kind of like a little like, wow, this people are gonna hear my speaking voice, which is <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right. So different than like my voice on like tracks that I've released, you know? But I, I love that play. I love doing everything, taking my voice in like every possible like corner 
that I can and like exploring. I don't want to choose like any yeah. of those things. I want to be able to like do all of them. I want to have like my goofy, funny voices and I want to sing like Jasmine and Aladdin. I want to like <laughs> scream at the top of my lungs and like I want to feel like Mariah Carey. Like I want to do all of it. And I think with this track with Veloma, I really felt like, yeah, like the character in the song and like the story in the song really gave me a chance to like have vocals sit in like the place that felt kind of like maybe a bit like ethereal or just like in a different in a different space i knew you and knew you were super cool but for some reason the idea of like making music with you was like i'm not ready yet no. <laughs> <laughs> i need more time <laughs> like uh so when you asked me to do the track i was like oh oh my god just like <laughs> It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's go time. It's no, like, I gotta, I gotta go. I've always kind of like viewed your music and I know everyone's like barometer of this is like different, but I view yeah. your music as like good music. No, it's <laughs> like, there's like, there's like music and then there's like good music. Yeah. There's right? like fun music and quality music. This weird it, line. Yeah, that a lot of people it's like, yeah. Yeah. And so like, like, it's like, oh, your music is fun, but it's good. It's Word. like good. Okay. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm like ready to cross into that territory. So getting to be like on an Omni Boy track was like, yeah, I could put my voice on good music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so like working on like Veloma feels like, yeah, the, the, the scope of the song is like so big and there's so much like space in it that it was really cool getting to be able to just like branch out and like do different things and also like play around with like the space that my voice can take yeah. on the track you know like production wise i and listening back to it like i really love the like back and forth and like the contrast between like our voices i feel like it's yeah super cool having this like very like grounded like right here and then like spread out and like kind of soaring uh, vocal. it's like really cool i love i love dynamics like that so i'm really happy with it yeah like i think um for for people i mean because nobody knows this except for you right because like i sit you like oh here's <laughs> here's what <laughs> i've done like and it's just like i don't know i'll play it maybe like in the bottom of this video but it was like <laughs> the most like it was a scratch vocal of like here's what i'm hearing knowing yeah. you know it's not gonna be good it's kind of like it reminded me of when somebody goes to like an artist and they're just like they're like commissioning them and oh. they're like, this is my oc so he's got a big shield and he breathes fire and his tail is made out of popsicles and it's like yeah. this horrible rendition but it's like they don't have the skill right but they're just like yeah. hopefully turn this into magic but then the artist yeah. comes in and they're like, uh, I think I see what you kind of wanted. And they turn it into this like beautiful thing. I gave you like the dookiest of vocals. <laughs> Screaming at the top of my lungs. I'm just like, here's what it should sound like. Like for the people listening, there were no, no. harmonies. Like there was no, there was no yeah. layers or anything. It was just like, here's the idea of what I think it should sound like. <laughs> but you sent back the vocal and it's like, you're doing this, like all of these harmonics that aren't even like lyrics. You're just like. What is your approach Make for that? Because there is so many layers in the, in the vocals that you sent back. Like, how do you build that? As you're stacking voices, it's not just like the harmonies you're stacking like textures and everything um so the quality of your voice changes so what i like to do is i like to play around not just with like harmony but play around with like how i record my voice and like the texture wow. that i record my voice with um maybe doing like one take that's like super open and loud and like uh up here and then another take that's like ah somewhere in here and like super throaty wow. and like breathy and airy and like sandwiching them together or doing a take where like i'm not even like enunciating anything i'm uh. just kind of like na, 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 na. And, yeah and like sandwiching 
all of these like qualities together like i'm gonna play around i'm gonna do takes that are just like bonkers just to see how it makes my voice sound with like all the effects and everything that i'm running everything through also like it yeah. It just, it completely changes the shape of the sound. That's like my whole thing is like, I just want to be able to do that all the time, always. Like everyone wants to sing yeah. like Beyonce, right? But like Beyonce has Beyonce's voice. Exactly. Like, I have my voice, which is not Beyonce's. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not Beyonce's. Yeah. <laughs> but like whatever... I've got going on, like focusing on just like the things about my voice that like I can do, the unique things in like my voice and the technical ability is like something that will come with time and like practice, but like everyone always talks about like finding your voice, right? Like really yeah, finding your (laughs) voice, right? It's like such a, it's such a thing. I'm going to shout someone out that I don't know right so (laughs) but like i'm like fascinated with them because of their voice um sebi it's artist sebi yeah yeah. i am so fascinated with sebi's voice like just truly wild yeah (laughs) how how yeah just how they utilize their voice on tracks is like this is you did it like you sound like (laughs) sebi (laughs) You know, it's a thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's a thing. People get so distracted with like technical proficiency all the time, even when it comes to instruments or like, they're just like, wow, that person can play super fast. They're like ripping and roaring on the piano. Yeah. But then it's like, I know so many people there, there's like artists, like, like I always use the example of Matt and Kim because oh. like the, yeah. those keyboard parts are laughable. Like if we look at them yeah. from like a technical oh like, my standpoint. God. We could talk about this for <laughs> ages. Oh yeah. It's basically chopsticks most of the time, right? It's like maybe two, <laughs> maybe three notes are being played at a time. It's super oh. simple, but that those are some of the coolest songs like I've heard. Like I'm so hyped to hear oh, Mandy Kim songs. Oh my God, yes. Okay, yeah. so this is gonna come out, come off so salty. And I'm only doing yeah, this fine. because it's you. I like have never talked about this, but I, I would listen to Matt and Kim and be like, I could do that. Yeah, yes, all I the time. I could do that. <laughs> like the drum part, just like, boonk, boonk, boonk. Yeah. and he comes on with like, it's not to say it's a bad voice, but definitely not a Beyonce voice. Like, right. <laughs> if you can do that, then do it. Then do it. Yes. And it's yes. like being put to that challenge is like, okay, well, if I'm going to be here, like mm, I can do that. Then like, I got to do something that says like, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> and oh only God. upon taking that in that endeavor do you realize like, oh, there's like a lot more that like goes yeah. into this than you think there is. Absolutely. And so Matt and Kim is like one of my I have never vocalized this. Matt and Kim, one of the most influential bands oh in my God. making music. For that Same. reason alone. For that Absolutely. reason alone. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like knowing what your voice is and committing to that. It's, yeah. It's more important than anything. It really is. It really is. I think more conversations about making music, making art in general, should focus on that. Like there needs to be more conversation, in my opinion, about just like grounding yourself in like who you are. It's like, there's nothing else you can do other than that. Like everything else is out of your control. (laughs) That's so so hard for people to learn though. It really is. It really, because it's like a, it's constant. Like, yeah, like it's it's, not fun. And there's no narrative there. It's just forever. And then, and then you die. Like it's just, (laughs) you do that forever until you can't anymore. And that's not fun to tell people. It's not, it's not sexy. It's not no. sexy at all. Like maybe there's somebody looking at this that that makes music and they're getting into singing and they hate their voice. Like I hated my voice for so long. And eventually I just had to go, whatever, this is the one I have. Yeah, and then I like committed it, to it. That's, and so for you, what is like, what is the advice you could give to somebody that, as somebody who is maybe one of the most like proficient vocalists and like vocal controlling people I know? Not being afraid to sound goofy because when it's your voice, 
it's super, you know, like you really yeah. feel when you sound <laughs> goofy, right? Absolutely. Like it's, there's no shield there. It's, it's, yeah. it's you. So it's fun, first of all. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it breaks down some of those like psychological barriers of like finding, of feeling stupid or like cringy. I get the feeling, I know, but like, it's not useful. It's ultimately so unhelpful to cringe. You have to accept what it is yeah. and keep moving. You can like be a vocalist or you can cringe. And that's, yeah, two options. Yeah, word. <laughs> vocalist or cringe. <laughs> 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 that's good though but i think yeah i think that like that covers everything and thanks so much first of all thanks for making the track with me it's like oh it was yeah, such a pleasure i love me. that song yeah and thank you for making music at all it's been good <laughs> it's been cool and thank you for like sitting and giving me the time to, uh, to do this like little conversation about your process and how you made the song yeah this was really fun it was really great i'm really glad we got a chance to like talk and hang out thank yeah. you for inviting me to like do that track because honestly like i said it i feel like it really set me off like creatively so i appreciate cool. it